All right, let's move on to the tight end room, fans. We get to y'all uh, roster breakdown, full roster breakdown. Uh, going into the tight end room, the top guy on top of the tight end room, Mr. Adam Troutman. Adam Troutman's a kid, a uh, guy you got to watch out for. He's in the third year. He's a third-round draft pick. The Saints moved up to get this guy. They had big visions, Coach Payton did, of Troutman uh, performing in the Saints offense last year. Not so much when given the reins. He kind of collapsed, didn't know what he was doing. Early on, confused, wasn't blocking. But I didn't say he wasn't blocking as well as he could have blocked, dropped a few passes. Uh, he just, you know, he was a phase or two behind on certain plays. It just didn't look good. It was a shocking, a shock to his uh, system when he got in there because he has the size. He's 6'5", he's 245, 250 pounds. He got everything. It's just he has to figure out the game and know what to do. And, and credit to him because the who, the who that nation was on is back last year because we need him to step up and perform at that position. But if you go back uh, a couple of weeks ago, we covered it on the stream. We talked about the fact that he'll be attending the tight end camp put up there by uh, Kels. So you'll see him going to Travis Kelsey's uh, tight end camp, a tight end university, as it's called, with George Kittles is there, Greg Olson is there. So he went over there and to kind of get a little schooling right there to kind of help him see the game differently as he prepares himself uh, for this upcoming season. Well, he'll be the starting tight end for the black and gold. So and I've said this and I'm going to say it again. I think Adam Troutman, you see the best version of Adam Troutman that we've seen to date. And that's not saying much because he struggled. Uh, uh, last year and prior to that, he was mostly a third string tight end that came in. But for him to take the position, I think he will step into the position this year. And I named several factors, some very similar to the Trey Quan Smith situation. And so far, it's not saying that we're not expecting anything out of Troutman. It's quite the opposite to a degree. And what I mean by that is we know that Troutman will be the starting tight end, but the pressure, a lot of the pressure of the offense will not be in his hands like it was last year because they had uh, we didn't have the wide receivers to, gra to to kind of grab the attention of you know of the defense so Troutman can operate in the comfortable space well guys like uh, Michael Thomas is back Chris Olave will take the top off defense and, and Jarvis Landry's here so when you have guys like that moving around and running around they just kind of absorb a lot of the attention of 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 uh, of competing defenses and forcing a guy like Troutman to run around underneath unabated. In most cases, he'll be unguarded, you know, so he'll be able to make plays with his, with the athleticism that he has and, and do some stuff. So it's a good sign that he went to the tight end university, to be honest with you, because there have been tight ends that went there. They learned what they needed to do. They got the confidence, what they needed to do to have, to make impacts. And we expect the Troutman to have 70 catches this upcoming season. Uh, but we do expect him to kind of share the room with other tight ends as well. So even though he'll be a starter, you'll be seeing Taysom Hill. Once he comes back off his Lynch Frank injury, we'll see him share the room with other guys like Jawan Johnson and Nick Vanette. So as we get into the tight end room, Taysom Hill is another guy we spoke about who was kind of slid in the tight end room because of the obvious fact that he had a playmaker there. So with him coming into the, to the tight end room, they see that Taysom Hill occupies or acts as a guy that creates mismatches underneath, which is another force to uh, another attention grabbing player to kind of bring the pressure off a guy like Adam Troutman. So the Saints have guys like lightning rod players that absorb the lightning or the uh, energy of the opposing defenses to free up times or free up guys like Troutman, which Troutman got comfortable toward the back end in that game before he got hurt when he, they were running tight end screens and all that trying to get him in the game but he will benefit because of the bigger or the more talented players operating in the offense so Taysom Hill in my bed a lot of people say they don't like him at the tight end position I think he'll do okay at the tight end position simply because he blocks uh, the mismatch applications that he provides very few linebackers and defensive backs can guard him and once he gets going, he runs over these DBs. They don't like it. So, I mean, there ain't a handful of linebackers that can stay with him. In, so, like I said, he's a, he's a nightmare matchup for a defense coming as a backup tight end. And the Saints can miss and match him in all kinds of ways. So, hell yeah, Taysom Hill works in a tight end room because you can move him around and create mismatches. And that's a big part of the Saints game. You can't guard everybody. And Taysom Hill running around there, catching the ball, running over people, making making first downs happen and shit, running over their defensive backs and then getting up and jumping like a, a, a jackrabbit. So, yes, Taysom Hill, it's going to work in a tight end run. Who's not going to work and need to step their game up is Nick Vanette. Nick Vanette, 
should have been put in the street. This is another Sean Payton hire, just like Adam Prentice, the fullback was. Nick Vanette, uh, you know, he's a six foot seven tight end that comes from Ohio State. Coach Payton was waiting just when uh, Denver cut that dude. He gave him a three year deal. I didn't understand why he gave him three year deals when other talented players were here that deserved three year deals, but he gave it to Vanette. And Vanette last year, barely, he didn't get on the field till later on in the season. He did a few positive things, caught a touchdown or two, I think a touchdown, but dropped several more. You can't be a six foot seven, a tight end in the NFL in the red zone and get and getting guarded uh, by 5'11 or six foot or even six foot one cornerbacks. You're six seven. You're supposed to jump over their heads, make plays, whatever you gotta do. But he is the type of player that we need to keep an eye out on. And Nick Vanette needs to step up and earn his money. Really, the Saints ain't going to put him in the street because of the dead cap figures attached to him. They kind of stuck with Nick Vanette this year. But Jawan Johnson's another guy that we like in the tight end room because Jawan Johnson was doing a lot of positive stuff for the Saints last year. Ultimately, what slowed him down was he had got, he got hurt. And then, of course, he was in Sean Payton's doghouse for several weeks after the fact and didn't come back um, too much later. It wasn't televised or, or promoted or pushed but when asked as he was not listed on any inactive list he was he was healthy and when asked about him a uh, sean payton we covered on the show sean payton said i need somebody to play special teams that happened for three games in a row saying that when Jawan johnson could have been on the field in red zone situations catching touchdown we needed his production for whatever reason coach payton shelved him and he wasn't hurt he wasn't on any hurt list you know so he he was just and he was game day inactive that's what and it happened several weeks in a row. So with him out of with Sean Payton out of the way, perhaps we can see Jawan Johnson thrive a bit because now will be a time for him. He's a natural tight end when he first came. He's a wide receiver who made the jump last year to the tight end. He looked really good. He just needs to keep doing what he's doing. He got a tight end body, blocks his ass off. He's not afraid of catching touchdowns. And his numbers outperformed that of uh, Nick Vanette. Well, he did very well in the limited time that he had. So I'm hoping to see him. Next on the list is Lucas Crawl. This is a guy that came over from Pit from the Pittsburgh Panthers. He was Pickett's guide of the uh, Pittsburgh Steelers' first round draft pick, one of his favorite targets at the tight end position. He kind of his temperament kind of reminds me of Jeremy Shockey. He's one of those crazy tight ends. Has some athleticism too, uh, and my and a lot of people looking at Crawl saying, "Hey man, uh, if he he did pretty decently in the mini camps, if he continues his production." and keeps doing what he's doing, Lucas Crowell could probably possibly make a spot because listen, uh, uh, the position, the tight end room is unsettled outside of Adam Troutman and, and Taysom Hill because of Taysom's money and Troutman's status there as a third round draft pick, a lot of it's unsettled. So if you can have a Lucas Crowell to kind of make it hard on these other guys, he can kind of move his way up that tight end depth chart if he steps up and handle his business. So we'll see, man. Yeah, I know, and you're right, Kevin, Lucas Crowell, he got to crawl in that lineup, you're right. <laughs> So, yeah, what's up, Kev? But, yeah, that's what we talk about right there. And, of course, J.P. Holtz is another dude who, um, if we talked about fullback tight ends, J.P. Holtz is a guy that could possibly perform that on the bottom of the depth chart. And then Brandon Dillon is a guy they brought in by getting rid of Wahali, which was a, uh, a player they brought in and they put this Brandon Dillon's guy in here. So I wouldn't be surprised if one of those guys get released a cut in the training camp and the Saints bring in a veteran tight end to compete to kind of fortify that group because injuries do hurt, uh, happen there. And I would love to see uh, a veteran tight end addition come into the team to kind of help out there, man. So we'll see. 